really matters? That might be the most important question you can ask. So let's talk about it. Welcome to What Really Matters podcast, Everyday Spirituality with Karen Wyatt. Thanks for being here with me today for another episode. I'm going to be talking today about how to forgive your former self. And I'll explain how I came up with that idea as a topic and why it's important to me. And I'll get started with that in just a moment. But I wanted to remind you that all of the episodes of What Really Matters podcast are available on my YouTube channel, which is End of Life University. And so if you uh, enjoy going on YouTube, you can go to my End of Life University channel. There's a playlist called What Really Matters. And all of these episodes are listed there where you can uh, listen to the episodes one after another or sort them out and choose which one you want to hear. I wanted to let you know that because I know some people prefer YouTube to other podcast platforms. So you can check it out, End of Life University channel on YouTube. And if you do go there, be sure to subscribe. I'm trying to get my number of subscribers over 1000. So I can use all the subscribers I can get if you're interested in just clicking the little button to subscribe when you're on YouTube. So now we'll get on to my topic for today, how to forgive your former self. And if you've been listening the last month or so, you know, I went through a three part series on how we grow, talking about how we grow in consciousness, basically spiritual growth. And one of the things that has happened for me, but happens to all of us, when we're on this path of growing and expanding our consciousness, we actually become like new people each time we reach a new stage in our development. We can change a great deal in how we see the world and how we think about the world. And that has a big effect on how we behave and treat other people, and even how we look at ourselves. So as we go through this growth process and expand in our consciousness and our behavior evolves. And if you listen to part three of that series, you'll know I mentioned when you get to the integral stage, which is our goal really, because that's what the world needs right now is more people at integral consciousness. That's the first stage at which our behavior is guided more by love, more by our higher selves than by our lower selves. So there's more love as a motivation behind what we do and say and how we show up in the world, more love than ego based fear or greed. But that's the first time that love actually predominates in our behavior. So at earlier stages, we might say that we value love and we strive to be loving. We want to be loving. We believe in love, but we just may not be as capable of acting from love as we are when we begin to wake up to integral awareness and integral consciousness. And so this is one fact it's important for us to remember. Our aspirations and hopes for how we act in the world and show up and what we bring to the world may be ahead of our ability to actually carry out what we wish we could bring to the world. Like we may long to be loving people in the world, but we simply may not be capable of it until we reach higher consciousness. So we're aware of the fact that it's a good thing to be loving and operate from love, but we simply may not be able to do it wherever we happen to be at that particular time in our development. So it's going to take growing and expanding in our consciousness before we can actually behave the way we wish we could behave, before we could be the loving people that we imagine ourselves to be or want to be. So in this process of growth, one thing that happens for us, as our consciousness expands, we become 
more able to look honestly at our behavior from the previous stage. We can look back at ourselves and things we've done or said or believed and sometimes feel distressed over how we used to be. Sometimes we can't even believe that that we acted the way we did in the past. Sometimes because we have new awareness now, it seems like, why didn't I understand this last year or five years ago? How could I possibly have done or said the things, the things that I did? How could that have happened? And why didn't I see it the way I see it now? But that's just part of growth. So I wanted to talk through this phenomenon a little bit because we have to have a lot of compassion and forgiveness for our former selves in order to move on and to not beat ourselves up too much over how we have behaved in earlier times in our lives when we were different people. And so one way to look at this One big leap in consciousness and awareness that happens in childhood is this expansion to a more rational consciousness at around age eight, seven to eight for children. And it's at that point when children no longer believe in Santa Claus or the Easter Bunny, things that just the year before, just even a few days before this happens, the child may easily have believed in Santa Claus. There was no doubt that there was a Santa Claus. Of course, there was a Santa Claus. But as soon as the expansion to a more rational way of seeing the world happens, the child absolutely cannot and does not believe that Santa Claus could be real. And so when you think about it, that's a rather dramatic change, isn't it? And there have been researchers who've talked about showing a child a video of themselves a year earlier when they were talking about how much they believed in Santa Claus and what they thought about Santa Claus. And the the newly rational child looks at that video and feels embarrassed that they could have thought those things, that they could have looked at it that way, and it makes no sense to them. How could I possibly have thought Santa Claus was real? Of course, it's Santa isn't real. Of course not. And you might be able to remember back to a time when that happened to you, that rational awareness and understanding of the world, and how it changed the way you saw everything about Christmas and Santa Claus. So that's just one example to help you think about the fact that we change and become different people as we grow and expand in consciousness. And recently, I've been reading a lot of posts from the people who are going through the process they call deconversion, which means leaving behind the religion that they used to believe in, that they used to be devout, fervent believers in. And what's happening for these people is that they're waking up to new consciousness. And that's one reason that they can no longer believe the religious principles they believed in before in the same way they used to believe them. Suddenly, they see the world differently. They see everything around them differently. And what used to make sense and seem like the right thing to them no longer fits with this new consciousness that they've taken on. But many of them are reporting that they now feel embarrassed and ashamed about things that they used to say or talk about or write when they were at a different level of consciousness, when they were part of this religion and when they were acting from the belief system that they carried with them at that time. And that is something, as I said before, that happens to all of us as we grow. When we look back at what things we did in the past, it is embarrassing at times, and we can feel ashamed of ourselves because of the way we behaved. 
And that has happened to me many times on this journey of growth. And I've gone through, I tend to go through cycles of it when suddenly a whole uh, cluster of memories come up about something that I did or said, or the way I treated someone, the way I thought about things. And I am in disbelief that I actually could have behaved in that way. I can't imagine that I could have said what I said. How did I not see what I was doing wrong? How did, how did I not see beyond the way I was thinking at that time? And so I can attest to the fact that there is a lot of embarrassment and shame about older behaviors from our former selves that we have now thankfully grown beyond. Our consciousness has expanded beyond living that way. We're able to bring more love into our behavior. And it's a huge relief when we reach that point where we can actually behave with the love that we may have believed in before, but couldn't actually manifest and couldn't actually live from in our lives. But we have to find a way to live with our former selves because it is a reality. It is true. We used to be who we were before and we have done things that we now don't feel good about and don't feel proud of. So I think it's a really important step in our growth process to figure out how do I make room for my former self, who I used to be, and how do I find a space where I can forgive myself and not continue to beat myself up and be embarrassed by who I used to be? So I've done some thinking about how we can work on this because I think it's a really important part of our growth as we're, we're continuing to expand in our consciousness that we be able to accept the past and accept who we were before and allow ourselves to have been more narrow in our thinking and smaller in our hearts and less loving in the way we treated other people or the way we behaved in our lives. Coming to terms with these memories of who we were is part of healing our shadow and parts of updating ourselves in a way, updating our operating systems and bringing more of ourselves into this higher level of consciousness. But we can't carry regret and self-blame with us and continue to move forward in our consciousness. We have to find ways to forgive ourselves. So I've done some thinking about how do we do that? How do we accomplish that? And so the first thing is just what I've been talking about, to be able to look at those things that we now view as wrong, that we now feel embarrassed about, be able to just sit with it and allow the memories to come up and allow ourselves to process it and think about what we did and even to feel the pain of it, the shame, the embarrassment or guilt, whatever it is that comes up along with that memory, be able to sit with it and to feel all of the emotion about it. Don't judge it. Don't try to repress it. Don't try to numb it or push it away. Just let it be there. Let the memory be there. Let the emotions be there that come up with that memory. So it's really important that we be as neutral as we can as we're allowing these, these memories and their attached emotions to come to the surface. And at some point with our new higher consciousness where we are right now, we need to be able to look at the fact that life is a learning and growing process and that we ourselves have traversed many different stages in our growth. We can even look back at life and see this image I talked about before of an expanding balloon and how your balloon of consciousness has gotten larger and larger and larger over time. But there was a time in your life when it was smaller than it is now. What you could see and how you saw it was much smaller, more limited, narrower, 
and less loving than what you can see right now. But that is normal. That's how growth happens. We all begin at square one. We all start at at conception. (laughs) We all begin at the beginning. And each one of us has to travel through these very many stages. And we learn and grow as we go. And We may have made more progress in some areas than others. We might have more wounding in some areas than others. There might be more pain we're carrying that we need to process and work on. But it's important to be able to look at all of that and see ourselves and see this pattern of our lives and the gradual growth that's happened. Sometimes we may have moved forward. Sometimes it may feel like we've gone backwards for a little while before we once again got over something and were able to move on. But but as much as you can try to look at that pattern of growth and expansion in your life. And then remember that however you behaved in the past, whatever you did that you now feel shameful about, or that you now regret was actually a normal part of the stage that you were in before that may have been the best you could do at that particular time with with where you were in your consciousness, with how you saw the world, with what you understood about life, that may have been the best for you. And so try to find space for that possibility that when you did behave in a way that now feels wrong to you, you honestly didn't know better at that time. You honestly couldn't see what you can see now. You didn't know. You were doing the best you could at that time, given the circumstances you were in, given the consciousness that you had. And so the more you're able to see your life as a whole process in a way that is unfolding and you're participating in it, the more you can recognize these earlier stages. Like for one thing, you're not embarrassed or ashamed that there was a time when you were a toddler that you couldn't walk, that you could only crawl. You don't judge the toddler for crawling and not being able to walk. You recognize, well, that was normal. That was the best the best I could do at that age. I hadn't learned yet how to walk. My body hadn't developed to the point where I had the strength and the balance to be able to walk. So you can look back and not blame yourself, forgive yourself for being at that earlier physical stage. And it's, it's the same thing for our emotional and spiritual development. We need to be able to look back and feel compassion and forgiveness for who we were in the past for these former selves of ours. And it's important to recognize also that going through those earlier stages was a necessary part of our growth. We couldn't be where we are now if we hadn't traveled through those earlier stages. They were essential because we talked about this before and how we grow. You can't skip steps. You can't skip any of the stages. Each one of us has to go through every stage and we have to experience it in our own way. So the process we followed, the way we have grown, it's been necessary and important. We've learned something at each and every stage that we needed to bring with us so we would have it with us right now. And I think one step that I don't think is absolutely necessary, but could be helpful if, if you find it that way is perhaps to make amends or to apologize if there's someone in your life that you feel you may have done harm to when you were at an earlier stage. If that person is still in your life and you have the option to talk with them, Sometimes it can be very healing to apologize or to let them know that you now regret and feel badly about something you did or said in the past. I don't think it's always necessary. And oftentimes it isn't even possible. Like some of the regrets I have were things that I said to my mother or the ways that I treated her in the past. And she's no longer living. So I can't sit down with her face to face and have a conversation. But 
I can write about my feelings and I can express it. I can write her letters. I can even talk to her even though she isn't physically present. And I can find healing in that way by expressing the regret, by asking for forgiveness. And in a sense, I'm, I'm asking for her forgiveness, but that's a way of helping me to forgive myself. So I think there is room for apologizing and asking for forgiveness in one way or another. And then I think it's also important that we accept the fact that we are not perfect and never will be. And so we are flawed in many ways. That's kind of a part of being human. And so we can't have unrealistic expectations for ourselves. We have to understand that we are going to make mistakes. And no matter how much we grow spiritually, we will continue to make mistakes and do things that we regret and don't like. But it's okay to be flawed. It's okay to not be perfect. And um, I have a poem that I wanted to read to you. This is from my new poetry book that I mentioned last week called Love Notes from the Hollow Tree by Jared K. Anderson. And um, I'm really enjoying his poetry a lot. This poem is called Resolution. I give up wanting to be whole, to be strong, to be beyond criticism. Instead, I will be creative with my empathy. I will not curse my flaws. I will live in the light of honest vulnerability. I will look at a sculpture and understand that need is what calls art from bare stone. Perfection calls to nothing. I love these words, um, the thought of being creative with my empathy and having empathy for myself, for who I was, for how I've grown, for what life has brought me that I've been able to learn from and be creative as I find compassion for who I was instead of cursing my flaws. And this idea that perfection calls to nothing It's need and flaws and gaps that call art from bare stone. I I just love that idea. And what a great reminder that we don't even want to be perfect. Where is the impetus for growth and for change and for working on ourselves if we were already perfect? So that poem is really speaking to me right now. Uh, as a motivator for finding empathy, creative empathy, and forgiveness for my former self, and not so much letting myself off the hook for past behaviors I've had, um, wanting to make amends, um, reconciling the bad behaviors I've had in the past, but not hating myself or beating myself up over those behaviors. And then another poem that's really speaking to me is titled Oracle. In the center of the forest, there is an unlikely stone that remembers when the mountains were new. It waits in a circle of moss like the pupil of a green eye. You kneel and ask it a wordless question. It answers, cherish exactly who you are for there can never be another. And I think this is also a perfect reminder and the perfect attitude for us to have about our growing process, about our former selves and all of the mistakes we've made, all the things we regret, all the things we wish might have been different as we're working on accepting all of those flaws and imperfection to remember to cherish all of it, cherish every part of ourselves, even every flaw, even every imperfection, cherish all of it for it is part of our uniqueness, part of what makes us who we are here on this planet and part of the gift that we bring with us to this life. So 
I think it's beautiful to remember to have creative empathy for ourselves, to cherish all of our lives and all of who we are, even when we judge that we, we were not quite as good as we wish we were, to be able to allow that and to accept it. And so to end this little discussion today, I say don't be afraid to look at your former self. Don't be afraid to let the memories and the emotions come to the surface. Just remember with your new expanded consciousness, you have more capacity for empathy for your former self. You're more able to love who you were, who you are, who you've always been from where you stand right now. So allow all of those memories to come to the surface, love each one of them and cherish who you are, because that's the very best way that you'll continue growing and not get stuck with an old wound from the past. So until we're together the next time, remember that we are here for love. That is the ultimate goal, is to be able to bring as much love as possible to this planet. So face your fear, be ready for whatever life brings you next, and love each and every moment of your precious life. Bye-bye.